My brothers and sisters who are in Christ, this is Minister Charles Brown from the Doctrinal Institute of Jesus Christ. This lesson is on the theories on the creation of life. The first theory is the Buddhist theory. This theory suggests that there are three schools of thought regarding the origin of the world. The first school of thought of the Buddhist theory claim that this world came into existence by nature and that nature is not an intelligent force. This nature works on its own accord and continue to evolve. The second school of thought of the Buddhist theory says that the world was created by an almighty God who is responsible for everything. The third school of thought of the Buddhist theory suggests that the beginning of this world and of life is inconceivable since they have neither beginning nor end. Notice in this theory, there are three schools of thought and neither school of thought have a chronological order for creating the world as there is for the creative theory. Again, the Buddhist theory has difficulty explaining its own belief in reincarnation when the remains of the body is still in the ground. This Buddhist theory on reincarnation cannot give evidential truth that a person has been rebirthed in a new body that is an insect or animal, depending on the moral quality of the previous life actions. Now, the second theory is the mythical <clears throat> and atheist theory. Both beliefs are the same because they have unknown origins of life. Whereas in the mythical theory, it is hard to distinguish truth and fictitious narratives. In the atheist theory, humanity is acknowledged, but deities or the afterlife is not. The third theory is the evolutionary and Big Bang theory. While both theories are scientific explanations about origins, the Big Bang theory focuses on the origin of the universe, while the evolutionary theory Focus on the origin and diversification of life on Earth. Presently, there is no evidential truth that the evolutionary theory created life, and the author, who is Charles Darwin, of this theory doubted his own theory according to his autobiography. Now, the fourth theory is the creative theory. This theory gives a chronological order of the creation of the world. It gives us evidential truth through the environment and it declares the resurrection by maintaining that the body or its DNA cannot be found, thereby making it impossible to say that this episode did not happen, thereby giving life 
to the resurrection. In this creative theory, there are examples that a resurrection had happened according to John 11, chapter 38 and 44 verses. This creative theory also claimed that in this resurrection, we will see those who are deemed our brothers and sisters in Christ. See Hebrew 2nd chapter, 9th through 13th verses. Now, since we have concluded that the creative theory is more logical than any other theological theory, I will speak on some categories of sin for punishment that is listed in this literature, which is the Holy Bible of the creative theory. The first category of sin for punishment is murder. Cain murdered Abel and never repented, but became emotional when he was banished from the presence of God. Individuals that abort the fruit of the womb or babies practice infanticide, commit suicide, and intentionally kill is in this category for punishment. The second category for sin, the second category of sin for punishment is Participation in sin. The progenitor of the Messiah, whom name is Judah, participated in prostitution. However, he acknowledged and paid for his offense. Thereby, he was put in a different category for his punishment. Those individuals that participate in sin and acknowledge their offenses by showing humility are put in this category. The third category of sin for punishment is those who advocate sin. Rahab participated and advocated prostitution. Her knowledge of the Creator persuaded her to turn from her sin and work for the Creator by hiding and protecting the spies of Israel. Therefore, she was grafted in the family of the Creator. Individuals that advocate policies that is contrary to the Creator but humble themselves when they hear the word of the Creator and work for the fatherance of His word are put in this category. But individuals that advocate sinful behavior and do not humble themselves is the same as those that do it. The fourth category of sin for punishment is those who devise or conspire wickedness. Now David participated in this category of sin, but acknowledged his wrongness when he was confronted with the word of God and accepted the consequences of his actions without malice. Individuals that devise wicked imaginations which ought to conspire with others and accept the consequences without malice are put in this category. The fifth category of sin for punishment is spiritually fornicating with other gods. Now, we do not read where Solomon repented of his ways for fornicating with other gods. Therefore, his kingdom was split among his servant Jeroboam and his son Rehoboam. 
individuals that are lukewarm regarding the creator word is put in this category. I thank you for listening and may God bless you.